Hey everybody, this is a uh, walkthrough for the heat transfer by conduction gizmo, uh, the at home assignment in the week 24 folder. So um, go ahead, start by getting there. So you go to the week 24 folder, at home assignment, and then you're gonna have heat transfer by conduction and heat transfer by convection. Uh, I'm gonna link to um, this heat transfer by convection and do another uh, video for that here in a minute, so check the channel later for that. But this one is for conduction. So uh, for conduction, I'm going to hit edit, which I like to do to open up a new window for me and make it a little bit bigger and easier to see. So first off, I want to start with a few instructions. Um, please read the directions carefully. That in gizmos, I tell you all the time, is probably the most important thing to do, is make sure you read the instructions completely. So it says, click, in the, click the link in the title above, this right here. Boom, there it is. Um, and then log into Explore Learning to access the simulation. Follow the instructions through the simulation. Respond to the questions and prompts in the orange boxes. Text highlighted in blue represents an action step that you need to interact with the gizmo simulation in order to answer the question. So I highlighted your action steps in blue because if you skip over them, your answers can be wrong and this can get real confusing real fast. But make, so make sure you are paying attention and reading along and using good observations. So I've clicked on that and I've opened up the conduction. It shows the heat transfer by conduction up here at the top. And then you should see two beakers, thermometers, and the gizmo status. All right. So uh, as we go through this gizmo today, I'll show you how to use this and how to access different uh, tables and charts and graphs uh, through this gizmo. Go ahead and jump right in. So it says for the gizmo warm up again. It should. Uh, it's also really uh, important to read these bold words. These are vocabulary words that are important to know because it tells you what uh, important vocab words are that they're going to use throughout the activity regularly. So if they say thermal energy, you should know that what that means. And if you forget what it means, come back up to the top, look for the highlighted words. So radiation is. Um, thermal energy that can transmit heat is also called thermal energy. There's your thermal energy. Can be transmitted through space by radiation, by moving fluids, which is convection, or through direct contact, which is conduction, which is what we're going to look into. So it says, to begin, check that aluminum is selected and the bar chart tab, uh, and you select the bar chart tab and turn on show numerical values. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select bar chart and then show numerical values right there. So what this represents is the temperature at beaker A and beaker B. So beaker A has a temperature of 95 degrees and beaker B has a temperature of five degrees. So beaker A is really hot and beaker B is cold. All right, so hot, cold. Uh, we're using Celsius. Remember Celsius, this temperature scale is a lot easier than Fahrenheit. In Celsius, the water boils at 100 degrees and it freezes at zero degrees. So you have uh, one beaker where it's almost boiling and one beaker that's almost frozen. So it says, uh, what is the initial temperature of each beaker? So you can see here it's 95 and there it's five. You can also see that on the simulation itself, 95 is beaker A and five is beaker B. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. All right. Click play. What do you observe? So when you click play, what happens to the temperature in beaker A and what happens to the temperature in beaker B? Click play is right down here at the bottom. All right, so we see that uh, the temperatures um, have stopped moving at 50. So over time, what happened to the temperature of beaker A? So if right now it's at 50, and then it started at 95, all right, what happened if the temperature went from 50 to 95? Write that here. What happens in beaker B? 
All right, so the temperature started at 5, and it wound up at 50. So if the temperature went from 50, I'm sorry, from 5 degrees to 50 degrees, what happened there? Remember, uh, try to use complete sentences. When you do this, it sounds and looks a lot better. Um, remember that I'm not going to be giving you all the answers. I might give you a few like I did here. Um, but I want you to uh, do the observations and experience and learn from the simulation yourself. I'm going to walk you through the tough parts of how to navigate some of the stuff that might get confusing. But remember, I'm not going to try to give you exact answers all the time. All right, so the next question three is a why do you think question. So this one can't be that wrong as long as you're in the ballpark. So uh, the temp why do you think the temperatures at A and B changed the way they did? Put that answer here. Remember, a complete sentence. So next we're going to go into conductors and insulators. Conductors and insulators. We're going to find out what they are and how they have to do with uh, conduction. So this introduction part is really important. That's why I highlighted in orange. So first click reset and then click the table tab. All right, so I'm going to click the reset button here. And then click table, which is up here. So you have description, table, bar chart, and graph. These are the chart, the tabs you have when they reference tabs. So it wants me to be at the table tab. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, materials and which ones are best conductors and which are the worst conductors. So in this simulation, it says you have aluminum, copper, steel, or glass to connect the two insulated beakers. So that's going to be this bar that's in the middle here that's connecting the beakers. Which material do you think will be the best thermal conductor? So again, this is a you think question. So this is a guess. It's okay if this one's wrong. I'm not going to, there is a right answer we're going to find out, but if you get this one wrong, it's okay. Then which one do you think will be the best insulator? So remember, here it is using this vocabulary that you just saw up here. So materials that allow heat to easily pass through are called conductors. Materials that resist heat transfer are called insulators. So something um, is a conductor, it lets heat transfer through it quickly, which means that heat has no problem getting from one place to another through its conductor. So it likes to help the heat transfer. A insulator does the opposite. An insulator does not transfer heat well. So an insulator is like if you heat something up, it doesn't get warm easily. So um, that's the difference here. So which one do you think will be the best insulator? So which one do you think basically you can break this down into which one will conduct heat the best and which one will conduct heat the worst is basically what you can break these two questions down into. After we do that, we basically just made our hypothesis. So for this next part, please pay very close attention to it because there's a tricky part at the end that I'm going to explain in detail. Um, so feel free to pause and rewind this section as much as you need to get this right. So. You're going to gather data. So with aluminum selected, click play. All right, click pause after about 200 simulated seconds. All right, and I'll show you what that means in a second. Record the temperature of each beaker at 200 seconds. Next, calculate the temperature change of beaker A and repeat each one for each material on the table. So you're going to be doing aluminum first. I'm going to do this one together with you, and then you guys are going to repeat the process for these three. So it's going to be the same process you're going to do. All right, so let's get the hang of it first. So it says click aluminum, click play, and then pause after about 200 simulated seconds. So when you click play down here, remember you should be on the table tab, you're going to see the time in here start to rapidly count up. Again, it says about 200 seconds. So when you see the 200 number flash on the screen, you're going to pause it. I'll do this a few times to show you. So watch. I'm going to click play. All right. I just hit 100. I just passed 200. So you see how I missed 200 because it's moving pretty fast? But what you can do is scroll up to find 200, and then I just stop, the, stop it there. All right. So 200 seconds is what we're looking for. It's this magic number right here, 200. 
it tells you the temperature in beaker A was 66.6, and the temperature in beaker B was 34, I'm sorry, 33.4. So watch, I'll do it again. So again, you hit play, and then right when it hits 200, try to stop it. Ooh, I did really well there. All right, nailed it. Got 200 right at the nose. All right, but again, it's okay if you don't get 200. As long as you stop it, as soon as you see 200 flash on the screen, so that your data includes the 200. If you let it keep going and you, and you don't do this right, watch what happens. If you let this go for a long time, you, it, what it does, it doesn't store all the data. So it will skip over what you did before. So now if I pause it, I go back. All right, the, the farthest I can go back is 700 seconds, and that's not good. So if you'd have to retry that if you go over. So again, hit play. When you see 200 to pop on the screen, hit pause it. Like again, here I did not perfectly get it, but I can see where 200 is, and that's what's important. And then you can scroll all the way up. So you want the temperature when it's at zero, and you want the temperature when it's at 200. You could export this, but you don't really need to if you want to. It'll be in a uh, an Excel file. All right, so let's copy down what it says. So it says, what's the temperature at 200 seconds? So I'm going to go to 200 seconds here. I'm going to scroll to 200. So you can see here, I stop the 200, the seconds is 200. So the temperature in beaker A is 66.6, in beaker B, 33.4. I'm going to type that in here. So it was 66.6 and 33.4. So that's the temperature of both beakers at 200 seconds. So now, right here is where it gets tricky. It wants you to find the change in temperature of beaker A. So how much did beaker A change its temperature between when it started and when it stopped at 200 seconds? So in orange, I gave you kind of a hint. You're going to subtract 95 degrees Celsius, which is what the temperature of which the, temp the uh, beaker A started. So if I go back to this table and I scroll all the way up, I can see that the starting temperature when time was zero, we had not started the experiment yet, was 95 degrees Celsius. So that's what I put. That's why I'm subtracting, because I'm trying to find how much it changed. So it changed from 95 to 66.6. All right, so 95 minus 66.6 equals, and you can use a calculator for that. That equals 28.4. That's how I wound that. That's how I got that. Now, you don't have to do this whole equation part, but I'm showing you the math that I used to get my answer here. And this is the answer that I want that I put in bold. Okay? It's 28.4 degrees Celsius. So that means there is a 28.4 degrees Celsius change between beaker A and beaker B. That's how you do one. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the simulation. I'm going to click reset. I'm going to change from aluminum to copper. And then you can see you can keep changing them and it changes the color. So now I'm going to do the same thing. So I've now switched it to copper, which is the next one up here. And now I'm going to click play. And I'm going to pause it at 200 seconds, just like I said to do before. Again, I wasn't perfect on 200, but as long as I have 200 close, I'm good to go. All right, so beaker A was now 56.9. I'm going to put that in here. 56.9. And beaker B 
is 43.1. Then remember, you always subtract 95 degrees minus the temperature of beaker A. So 95 minus 56.9. 95 minus 56.9. That gives me 38.1. And I put that here. Wait. 38.1. So this is what your chart should look like when you're done. All right. I want you to do the last two on your own. So what you're going to do here is go back, hit reset. Change this to steel, click play, wait till it gets to 200 seconds, hit pause, and then take the temperature at beaker A, beaker B, and then subtract from 95. What you're gonna see here is this change in temperature, that's what we're looking for. That's what's gonna, um, you're gonna wanna analyze, all right? Not so much what's over here, but the change in temperature is what's important. And when it says analyze, it says, what does your data indicate? Look at this, all right? See which one uh, transferred the most energy out of all four. <clears throat> That's what you're going to want to see what your data indicates. That's what that means. So then you're going to classify aluminum, copper, steel, and glass. Three of them are conductors. One of them is an insulator. So you're going to label the three that are conductors here and the one that's an insulator here. And then you're gonna choose the best conductor, which is gonna be the one that transferred the most energy here. So, at, so this could easily say energy transfer from one to the next. So then I want you to apply your knowledge to a practical use like a frying pan. So which one best transfers heat, that's the one you're going to want to use, okay? Because if you use a frying pan that was bad at transferring heat, it, you're, it would take forever to do anything on the stove. That's what I want you to apply for. That's it, okay? So you basically just have this one to do and the warm up as well. And that takes you to the end of the assignment. Um, again, if you need help, please reach out so I can help you. And um, watch this video, pause it, rewind it, uh, and make the best use out of it since I won't be able to show you this in person. Um, be on the lookout for the next video uh, on convection. And I'll see you next time.